Regulating Land Use. This is another presentation by Eric Sanders, the owner and president of the Sanders Firm PC. The purpose of the presentation. The primary purpose of this PowerPoint presentation is to raise awareness with respect to your civil rights. Note, these are very, and I mean very general guidelines. This PowerPoint presentation is not intended to convey specific legal advice or create an attorney-client privilege with the Sanders Firm PC or its agents. The Takings Clause. The law of eminent domain derives from the so-called Takings Clause of the Fifth Amendment United States Constitution, which states, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. First, it only applies to private property. Second, the private property seized or taken must be for public use. This limitation prevents government officials from taking private land for their own purposes. Third, fair or just compensation is typically determined using the market value of the land, that is the price for which the landowner could reasonably expect to sell the land to some other buyer. Although controversial, it has been deemed constitutional for state governments to have wide latitude, essentially unfettered freedom to regulate land uses. In a landmark case, the United States Supreme Court upheld zoning regulations in the case of the village of Euclid, Ohio versus Ambler Realty Company, and that citation is 272 U.S. page 365. It's a 1926 case. The Village of Euclid, Ohio versus Ambler Realty Company. In this case, the court ruled that it was not an unreasonable intrusion into private property rights by governments to restrict land usage because governments had a valid interest in regulating land uses to preserve or maintain the character of an area or neighborhood. With the Euclid case, some believed that zoning was an unreasonable intrusion into private property, but the case made state zoning ordinances constitutional with many states enacting zoning regulations and land use permits since the decision. Although there have been many challenges to Euclid case in attempts to have it overturned, the court has consistently upheld this decision. However, the question becomes, when does a government regulating land use become an unconstitutional taking? The Supreme Court faced this very question in two other landmark cases, Nolan versus California Coastal Commission and Dolan versus City of Tigard. In those cases, the government granted land use permits on the condition that the landowners relinquish certain interests in real property. The court held in these cases that the conditions imposed for approval of the permits went beyond land use regulations but rose to the level of extortion. As a result, the court tailored two requirements to ensure that the conditions set for permits were connected to legitimate state interests, essential nexus and proportionality. There must be a nexus or relation to the permit and the proposed land usage. Coons versus St. John's River Management. The issue of land use permits were revisited in a landmark case of Coons versus St. John's River Management. In this case, Coy A. Coons Sr. and his spouse had purchased land in Orange County, Florida, and over the years, the county had enacted legislation that substantially impacted their real property. He eventually sought to develop about four acres of his land, which compromised comprised of a mixture of forested and herbaceous wetlands, but state regulations required that he obtain certain wetlands dredging permit from the St. John's River Water Management District, an agency authorized to apply conditions to the permits to ensure that any construction is not harmful to the water resources of the district. The district would only allow development of his land if Kuntz agreed to make cash payments for improvements to unrelated district property miles away. Kuntz refused as he already agreed to donate 11 acres he was not planning to develop 
thus his permit was denied. He filed suit in Florida State Court alleging that the district's action of denying his land use permit was an unconstitutional taking of his property violating the takings clause of the Fifth Amendment. The court sided with Kuntz. However, the district appealed and the decision but eventually approved his permit. In a separate trial, Kuntz was awarded money for the temporary taking of his land. The appeals court upheld a Florida state court decision, but the district appealed to the Florida Supreme Court, which overturned the appellate court ruling. The United States Supreme Court granted Kuntz's certiorari to review whether or not Nolan Dolan requires for land use applied to a situation where the permit application were denied, not granted, subject to conditions, and the permit conditions proposed by the government to not require the landowner to relinquish property. The court held its decision that the Nolan Dolan requirement should apply even when the government denies a permit or demands money. How this decision affects government land use permit remains to be seen. But as a joint statement released by the St. John's Water Management District and Florida Department of Environmental Protection succinctly stated, it clarified the constitutional protections that must be afforded to landowners when governmental entities issue permits affecting property interests. Conclusion, the law of eminent domain gives the government power to act in the public interest. Anytime private land is taken for public use, however, the rights of individuals are affected. Please remember the legal questions at issue in such matters are complex, and the courts have been somewhat inconsistent in their approach to these cases. Therefore, persons confronting government interference with their property rights should consider seeking the assistance of an experienced land use law firm or attorney near you. About Eric Sands, Esquire, owner and president of the Sands Firm PC. Eric Sands is an active member of several legal organizations, including the National Employment Lawyers Association, the National Employment Lawyers Association, New York chapter, the American Bar Association, New York State Bar Association, and the American Association of Justice. He has also served general counsel to the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives, New York chapter. As a retired police officer, he holds memberships with several professional law enforcement organizations, including the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives and the Fraternal Order Police. Eric earned a bachelor's of arts degree from Adelphi University and graduated from the St. John's University School of Law. He holds a license to practice law in the New York State courts as well as the federal courts in the United States District Courts for the Eastern, Northern, and Southern Districts of New York. He has appeared before the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, New York State Division of Human Rights, NYPD Trial Room, New York City Office of Administrative Trials and Hearings, as well as other related proceedings. In 2008, Eric received the You Can Go to College Committee Foundation Humanitarian Award. In 2015, Eric received a prestigious 2016 Man of the Year Award from the Covert Chronicles USA. Eric is available to speak about the law, specifically individual civil rights, as well as other areas. Recently, he appeared as a panelist for a legal symposium hosted by the St. John's University School of Law's Journal for Civil Rights and economic development. At the symposium, which was entitled Criminal Justice in the 21st Century, the challenge to protect individual freedom, civil rights, and our safety, he discussed racial profiling, police accountability, and individual rights. About the Sanders Firm PC. The Sanders Firm PC offers those in the New York City area legal services related and connected to civil rights, civil service rights, criminal law, and discrimination. We firmly believe in everyone's individual rights, rights that are described and guaranteed by the Constitution of the United States of America. We understand our freedoms and liberties are sacrosanct and that 
have been won in many and various hard-fought battles. We are committed in every way to protecting your civil rights. If you have any questions or comments about the content of the slideshow presentation or general inquiries of the Sanders Firm PC, please feel free to contact us on the website, social media channels, or you can contact us at the New York office, 212-808-6515, um, or the Yonkers office, 914-226-3400. This has been another presentation by the Sanders Firm PC, and remember, we are your voice for justice.